You know, the funny thing is about this week's Raw is that it wasn't a terrible show. It actually really wasn't. There were some good matches, some good segments, some good things happened. You know, you got kind of a bit of a payoff at the end. It wasn't the worst Raw. It really wasn't. There were things that were very enjoyable about it. But I think if I had to encapsulate the feelings that come with this week's show in one word, in one word only, confused. No, sorry, just because they said it could be encapsulated in one word does not mark the end of this week's Raw review. Unfortunately, for some of you, that chose to click on the video anyways. But I think at all levels, when it comes to the direction of this product right now and where they're heading going into WrestleMania 32, I think everybody's fucking confused. And I understand. This is a confusing time right now. You look at the WWE, I think, frankly, that company is confused as shit. Because of the way they're doing this between Shane McMahon and The Undertaker. Are we doing Shane McMahon versus Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 32? Or are we doing Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 32? And I understand that you're utilizing Vince as a plot device here. That he is a major part of the plot device. But there comes a point in time where it's so often the case when it involves the McMahon family over the years, and we all know this, is that you run into a serious issue of McMahonism trumping allism. Like McMahon over everything. And when that focus and attention gets paid to Vince and anything Vince is involved with, everything else can kind of fall by the wayside, whether it really is called for or not. And... I sit here and I look in the way Vince is being featured and how it's being done. I understand to a certain degree you have to try and create some type of issue here between Vince and Shane on camera because the story itself doesn't make a whole lot of freaking sense. So you got to try and create something. you got to do something to try and piece it together. But it's now it's getting to the point where instead of wanting to see The Undertaker versus Shane McMahon at WrestleMania, you once again want to see Shane McMahon versus Vince McMahon at WrestleMania. And I think the WWE is really confused about they've got something interesting and something different, something nobody saw coming with Undertaker facing Shane McMahon at Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania. I don't know if they really know how to get where they need to get to. I don't know if they know how to do it. And I don't know if they're going to do it. And most importantly of all, I don't think they know how they want to get there, and I don't think they know how they're going to do it. Um, I'm, all, I'm also thinking the WWE is really confused right now, too, because... Once again, they didn't utilize Roman Reigns. This is the guy that's going to be main eventing WrestleMania 32. He's the guy that's going to be wrestling for the title. And I think they're in this situation where they're in a bit of a panic because they realize some of the audience is really resenting him, really doesn't like him, really isn't bought into him no matter what. And they've almost taken this kind of diversionary tactic to go away from Roman Reigns. Maybe they're afraid of the smart mark cities, if you will, just pooning and shitting on anything and everything that Roman Reigns does. But this isn't the way to go, and I think WWE has really confused themselves in terms of what to do with this situation. They've kind of put themselves in a corner, boxed themselves in, and they don't know how to respond, and they don't know how to act. They don't know how to overcome it. And maybe they have nobody to blame for themselves, sure. But they've got to be confused as shit right now, and clearly they are, because they've got a guy wrestling for the title of Mania, and he hasn't been on the show the past two weeks now. That makes no freaking sense whatsoever. You could say injury schmingery. There are all types of guys that get injuries on the road to WrestleMania, and they still find a way to be utilized on Raw every single week in the build-up to the show. Now you're talking about the franchise of the future, the future face of the company, on the road to WrestleMania, you haven't utilized in the past two weeks. What the hell are they doing? I don't think they know. Same thing with Brock Lesnar. One of your biggest attractions you've got. And in one of your most marquee matches at Mania, and frankly, for all intents and purposes, the match that probably will generate the most pure interest from a match standpoint, which is him and Ambrose in the street fight, and you choose not to utilize Lesnar again. I think WWE is confused on what to do with Lester because whenever they have him appear, they always have him appear as a monster and they present him as a monster to the point where it's not believable if anybody actually beats him. And they've created a Brock Lesnar monster now and not necessarily in a good way. It, it, 
I know it's confusing to me. And to me, the way the company presents this is very confusing too. And I think that they're confused, especially when it comes to Triple H versus Dean Ambrose. It's almost like they have buyer's remorse now with Roman Reigns versus Triple H. If you weren't going to be cold, fully convinced and you weren't going to be fully sold on the direction, then why choose that direction? It seems like over the past couple of weeks, they've been much more bought into and sold on Dean Ambrose versus Triple H than they ever have been the thought of Roman Reigns versus Triple H. If you were going to be more convinced of it and more bought into it and put more effort into trying to make it interesting and compelling, then why didn't you go in this direction to begin with? Again, it comes back to the whole thing of you put your chips in Roman Reigns, but then you're not really sure if you want to. But at the same point in time, you're not about to give up on it. And you really are in a position where you can't turn back from it now. So why the heck would you sit there and go with Triple H and Dean Ambrose for this next couple of weeks? It just shows me just how confused you are and what the hell to do. And I don't see where all of a sudden taking Ambrose away from Lester and focusing on Triple H represents the WWE's firm understanding of how to build up the feud between Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar. I think they're confused on how to do that as well. And I think in large part the fans are going to be confused by and large for a lot of different reasons outside of just those things. All of a sudden now we're talking about Dolph Ziggler taking on three members of the League of Nations. Why? Tying back into shit that happened at Survivor Series 2014. Not even acknowledging that it was Sting was the reason that he won. Why the fuck does this matter now? Why the hell would anybody care about this? And why the hell would anybody care about Dolph Ziggler at this point? <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler! And then all of a sudden you've got Brie Bella facing Summer. And Summer is going over Brie Bella for whatever the fuck reason. I understand Brie Bella's on the way out, whatever. But you're using this as a catalyst to try and get heat on Lana, who people naturally like and want to see. So that way you can try and get Brie Bella over as a babyface when outside of the sentimental crap that comes with Daniel Bryan into a lesser degree your sister Nikki not being around, people don't really like. I mean, she's just not that good. The fans are going to prefer Lana. So now you're presenting this in the way you're like, Lana's doing this and all of a sudden she's going after Brie. What the fuck is the whole point of this? Yeah, sure, fans will say, you know, it's going to be some big divas tag at WrestleMania, but it's just the components of it. If fans are confused, I can't fucking blame them. You know, all of a sudden, if you tuned into Raw and you hadn't watched SmackDown, you didn't pay much attention to the interwebs, you probably didn't know that there was a triple threat for the Divas title at WrestleMania, even if you knew they were getting there and that's where they were going to go. All of a sudden, you tuned into Raw, and instead of that being something that was a major talking point at the beginning or a recap of what happened on SmackDown or whatever the case it might fucking be, all of a sudden, we just dive right into a backstage segment and all of a sudden, they're talking about how it's a triple threat. And I'm sitting there, I know myself, and I'm going, what the fuck happened? I'm sure a lot of people that don't watch SmackDown, didn't pay a lot of attention to the internet, tried to have some lives over the past weekend, were sitting there wondering the same thing. What the fuck are they talking about? And it takes you a couple minutes to catch up, but by the time you catch up, the segment is fucking over. And then you get the whole thing of this awesome tag title match between Team Y2AJ, who you went so far as to create merchandise for, taking on the New Day. Phenomenal stuff. Pay-per-view worthy uh, tag title match. Just to sit there and unite these guys and Chris Jericho and AJ Styles. They've already wrestled three times, so now you've given the fans an appealing option in terms of these two guys being together. Just so that way you could have Chris Jericho turn on AJ Styles and they're no more. What the fuck? You went into the single shit too early. Now to team them up, people think that this is done, so they're happy about this. And there could be something there with this, just for the WWE to split off from it immediately after they went to the lengths of even making merchandise for this. I got to imagine that's got to confuse a lot of fans because they're like, now I'm really supposed to fucking care? You already gave me the matches multiple times, one-on-one. -on -one. Now you put them together as a team. You don't know what the hell you're doing with them, so why should I care about it? You know, Ryback's speech to Callisto. I can only imagine how much that confused everybody. What the fuck was Ryback talking about? This is make no goddamn sense. What the hell is he talking about? This whole tag team shit and going solo and standing on his own. What the fuck are you talking about, dog? <laughs> and then at the end, I can only imagine how many fans were confused about Bray Wyatt staring down Triple H. Like, that's supposed to scare God. Yes, Shane makes sons. Okay, terrific, great. But there is only one heavenly father of WWE, and that is Paul Levesque, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. God bless it all.
And you're talking about a 14-time world champion that has faced all the big names in the business over the years and damn near beaten them all. Except the Undertaker of WrestleMania. And he's supposed to be scared of fucking Bray Wyatt. He's supposed to be intimidated of Bray Wyatt, who's sitting there the last week talking about, oh, never somebody else is going to get conquered. The only thing he's conquering is men's buttholes or getting his butthole conquered by other men. Get the fuck out of here. And now all of a sudden we're doing this kind of sample tease of what happens if a stare down between Bray Wyatt and Triple H. So now we're maybe teasing Bray Wyatt turning baby babyface where maybe six months ago that's the direction you should have fucking gone to do something different with this goddamn guy. Instead you do the same goddamn thing with him repetitively over and over. Fans have got to be sitting there and wondering why the fuck would I care about this? Because I don't. And they probably don't. And they really shouldn't. Bray Wyatt in no way, shape, or form is in God's league. In no way, shape, or form should be staring down any fucking buddy. Period. I can imagine fans have got to be at least somewhat confused about this. Because at the end of the day, like I said, if anything else, I know above all else, I'm fucking confused about this show. No Roman Reigns again. Now granted, he's not booked on Roadblock. But this is the guy that was the champion at the Royal Rumble, and then lost his belt there. Had to wrestle a triple threat at Fastlane when he had a guaranteed title rematch, contractually, which is always the assumption, but was never addressed one way or another. So he wrestled a match at Fastlane that he shouldn't have fucking had to to get a title shot that he frankly already fucking had. Just so sit that way, immediately, you have Triple H take him out, and he's not on TV the past two weeks. How are you going to get anybody behind this guy? Why would anybody be fucking interested in seeing what Roman Reigns does if you don't feature him for two weeks in the heart of WrestleMania season? If anything, you get people even more apathetic about it. You get people to care even less about him because now you start to give them some incentive to say, hey, you know what? He's gone. I really don't miss him, so I don't give a fuck. And if anything, I'll be rooting for God come WrestleMania, which is eh, eh, wrong reaction. Look. Fuck, do you not utilize Roman Reigns when he's the guy that's supposed to be the franchise piece? Imagine them with John Cena in this spot years ago, or a Randy Orton, or a Batista, and not putting them on Raw for several weeks in a row, building up to their big moment at WrestleMania. Does that make any fucking sense? No, those guys are integral, key parts of the show. And in this case, Roman Reigns isn't anywhere to be found. No wonder nobody becomes a fucking star anymore. No wonder nobody unanimously gets fucking over. It's because of bullshit like this. And then no Undertaker again. I understand you might not see Undertaker every single week, but Jesus Christ, at some point in time, you gotta see something between the Undertaker and Shane McMahon. Because it can't just be Vince and Shane that carries the whole goddamn thing. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's going to be Taker versus Shane inside Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania 32. You know, it's 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 just you gotta find a way to utilize Taker here. Same thing with Brock Lesnar again. No Brock Lesnar, second week in a row. What makes this even more ridiculous is unlike Undertaker, unlike Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar actually has opponent for a roadblock, and he actually would be working roadblock against Bray Wyatt. And in no way, shape, or form was he utilized the past couple of weeks. You know, the same Bray Wyatt that cost him the shot at the title at the Royal Rumble, cost him the belt. You know, the guy that he should be pissed at, the guy he should be raging mad about. Bray Wyatt's been around the past couple of weeks. Brock Lesnar, nowhere to be fucking found. So we're supposed to give a fuck about that match whatsoever. Yeah, we've got Bray Wyatt staring down Triple H. What the fuck is going on here? Of all the people you thought you'd have found a way to incorporate Brock Lesnar into this week's show, if nothing else, you've got fucking Triple H involved. You've got fucking Dean Ambrose involved. Lesnar's WrestleMania opponent. You've got Bray Wyatt involved at the very end. Brock Lesnar's opponent at Roadblock. And Brock Lesnar is nowhere. How fucking stupid is that? And again, in general, Roman Reigns, Undertaker, Brock Lesnar. Out of the three marquee matches you have at WrestleMania 32... You have six total participants, six guys. Three of them aren't fucking there again. Three of them. Why the hell would I get interested in these matches, engage in these matches, care about these matches, if these guys can't care enough to fucking show up? If they can't care enough to be there, why should any fan, myself included, give a fuck about these matches come mania? 
And then you look at the way they use Stephanie McMahon this week. Frankly, they should be de-emphasizing her, not over-emphasizing her. Like this week, they went out of their way to do this dumb burial shit backstage with Dolph Ziggler. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Why would Stephanie be involved with that any way she performed? If she's going to be involved with anything, you would think she would at least be involved with Triple H directly, or she would be involved with her dad, Vince McMahon, directly in the Shane story. But she wasn't really involved with either this time go around. It was about fucking Dolph Ziggler. And anything you use to tie that together was just fucking stupid. Why are you using Stephanie like this? And again, it speaks to the greater issue. Stephanie gets television time, and there's no real payoff to her getting that television time come WrestleMania. There's no direct payoff. There's no physical payoff. And that's a problem. And that's a deficit that WWE always have to deal with, with Stephanie being in such a big position of power. And in general, where is the payoff with Vince and Stephanie and the way they're utilized the past couple of weeks on this road to McMahon mania? The closest payoff you could get, and the only thing that makes sense at this point that would even come close to trying to piece the story together between Shane and Taker and Shane and Vince and all this other crap and Vince and Taker is that you have Vince McMahon be the special guest referee for the Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania 32. If you're not going there, then why the fuck are we even bothering? Because if you're the leadership guy, if you're mad at your son, and you're the guy that calls the shots, why the fuck would you not make yourself the special guest referee in that match? Why would you not make it a fucking handicap match? Said it was one match. One night, you picked the opponent. Who's to say it couldn't be opponents? Why wouldn't it be a fucking handicap match? I mean, there's just so many things I'm so fucking confused about. But at the end of the day, all this usage of Vince McMahon and Stephanie McMahon, where is the fucking payoff to these guys being utilized so much? And even with Vince, if you don't have him be the special guest referee at West WrestleMania 32, where's the payoff to all this back and forth between him and Shane talking about all this imaginary issues and bullshit from 35, 40 fucking years ago? And then again with AJ Styles and Chris Jericho. You've already rushed through it and did a series of matches. You already did a program with them. Why would you team them together just to split them back off again? I'm confused as to why the fuck we should care about this. And why the fuck the WWE just couldn't help themselves with fucking this up. Because this should have been something big and huge. This should have been a moment. And no matter how much the WWE tries to make it a moment, and no matter how much some of the fans and the fanboys in particular try to make this feel like a big moment, you know this wasn't a fucking big moment. It wasn't nearly as big of a moment as it freaking should have been. And the simple reason is, we've already seen them wrestle several times. The mystique is gone. The appeal is somewhat gone. The care factor is somewhat gone. And now you have sent us in a direction of having them tag team together where you could do interesting and compelling things with them just to immediately yank the rug out from under it after, again, I mind you, they had actually bothered to make merchandise for this. Why would you bother turning them now? You'd already kind of sort of went in that direction. These guys have already wrestled three one-on-one -on -one matches. Why would we need a fourth one? I just don't get it. And then I know a lot of people are so excited to fucking Sami Zayn's back. Sami Zayn, oh my god, Kevin Owens, it's going to be awesome. Why the fuck would I want to see Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens wrestle again? If I wanted to see that, I'd go back and watch ROH in 2010 when I thought the story was really good. And then they do that shit again in NXT. And now they're going to do it again on the WWE main roster. I'm sorry. I'm tired of fucking seeing these guys wrestle each other. Why the fuck should I care about this match again for the umpteenth dozenth fucking time? Seriously. I'm not surprised that some of the fanboys are so geeked out and excited about this fucking match. But furthermore, <clears throat> you're bringing Sami Zayn back now. What, just to be foil for Kevin Owens at Roadblock but have nothing really happen? So that way Sami Zayn can potentially get lost in the schmaz of a multi-man IC title match at WrestleMania? I'm just fucking confused how this is supposed to be productive. And why I would want to fucking see this. Because I don't. I've seen it enough. How about new matchups? New opponents? Is that too much to fucking ask? Apparently it is. And then I'm still ultimately confused about why the WWE decided they wanted to confuse their fucking audience. Who is now confused. And the company is fucking confused by going down the path that they did with Triple H and Dean Ambrose. This is exactly my fear and my concern. You gave people a taste of what they thought they really wanted, and now they realize they kind of really do want it all the while. You didn't give them any reasons to care about Roman Reigns at all because you didn't have him there the last two fucking weeks. So as a result, a crowd that was already apathetic and unsympathetic towards him and frankly didn't like him 
now has even more reasons to be even more apathetic and unsympathetic uh, towards him and hate him even more because he's going to take away Dean Ambrose's spotlight facing God. Why go there? Why sit there and confuse your audience? Why tease one thing if you're not going to be all the way bought into it? Why tease this and why go this and affect the momentum of multiple WrestleMania matches by instead of focusing on Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar you focus, or focusing on Triple H and Roman Reigns, you're focusing on Triple H and Dean Ambrose in the last two weeks you haven't had Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns bother to fucking show up. Why would you do that? You're taking the steam out of multiple Mania matches for a match at a fucking throwaway show. And that brings me to the whole biggest point of my confusion for this week. You would have thought, based off of the priorities set forth in this week's Raw, that Roadblock was the biggest show of the year. Roadblock is not the biggest show of the year. WrestleMania, April 3rd, is the biggest show of the year. Anything and everything that you do as a company should be building towards that. I understand Roadblock is coming up Saturday. And as a result, you're going to devote some energy and attention towards that. That's fine. That's okay. Personally, I think that should be a special that's shown on USA or maybe some type of major network. But again, that's just me. You know, that's what you used to do with Saturday night's main event. Um, but instead, they went so hard in on Roadblock to the point where they seemed to almost forget about WrestleMania. Sure, there were mentions of WrestleMania, and there was some emphasis on WrestleMania, but the lion's share of the emphasis was on Roadblock. And at the end of the day, who gives a fuck about Roadblock? We're supposed to give a fuck about WrestleMania. I'm supposed to give a fuck about WrestleMania. The fans are supposed to give a fuck about WrestleMania. WWE, most importantly, most certainly, should be giving a fuck about WrestleMania. Especially knowing it even Vince talked about it on Raw. They're trying to break that... WrestleMania 3 indoor attendance record. They want to put over 100,000 asses in the seats. Placing more emphasis and attention on Roadblock than the WrestleMania show is not the fucking way to get it done. I don't know what the hell the WWE was trying to accomplish this week because frankly, at the end of the day, they didn't accomplish very much. What they did accomplish wasn't good. And the things that they did accomplish, I think, Largely just fed into their own confusion about what to do and what direction to go. Uh, just led to more confusion about for the fans on what they're doing and what direction the company should go. And most certainly left me confused as fuck as to what the hell this company is doing and what this company is thinking. Heading into that biggest show of the year and one of the most important shows, frankly, that they've had in goddamn years.